Imagine you are in your senior year of high school and you're thinking about what you wanted to do with your life late at night. You're trying to figure out what you're interested in and what you want to take to the next level. Imagine if being an MLB player was your dream. You were inspired by some of the greats in baseball and wanted to play just like them. Well, you're not the only high school kid who has the same dreams as you. Out of 200 high school kids, only one of them will actually make it to the MLB. That is approximately 0.5%. You have to be extremely lucky to even get a chance. While a lot of people don't make it to MLB, I will say quite a few of them have a better chance at making it to minor league baseball. If you do a simple Google search, minor league baseball is professional baseball below major league baseball, including teams affiliated with MLB clubs and independent baseball leagues consisting of unaffiliated teams. Minor league baseball has different levels that determine how big of a chance a player has to making it to the MLB. So for example, if a player is in AAA, which is the highest level right behind the MLB, odds are the team could have an eye on you depending on how you play. If you are in double A, you probably won't be looked at as closely. The point I am trying to make with all of this is that the path to Major League Baseball is far from easy. You have to be able to be at the top of your game every single time you take that field. And while minor league baseball is still considered to be professional ball, trust me, it has a lot of problems that we will look at in this video. Let's start off by looking at possibly one of the biggest steps to your professional career, getting drafted. Now the MLB draft is not at all what you would imagine it to be. It's not like the NBA where you only have two rounds, and it's not so much like the NFL where it has seven rounds. The Major League Baseball draft has a whopping 20 rounds. Think about that for a second. That means a total of 612 players will be drafted. What this also means is that a very few number of players will play in the MLB while others never make it to the pros. Now how many of them actually make it to the big leagues? Well why don't we take a look? Let's look at a random draft class like the 2010 MLB draft. By having 20 rounds in the draft, it means if you get drafted in the first round, the odds of you making it to the majors are a lot higher than a guy getting drafted in like the 10th round. Okay. If we look at the first round of the 2010 MLB draft, there were 50 picks. So 50 players got selected. Out of those 50 players, 32 of them made it to the MLB and played. That means 64% of the players drafted in the first round were capable of playing in the biggest leagues. Now, if we compare that to the later rounds of the MLB draft, like the 13th round, for example, out of 29 players drafted in that round, only six of them made it to the MLB. That's approximately 20% of players drafted in that round who were able to go pro. This kind of goes back to the point I made earlier in the video. It takes a miracle for a player to actually make it to Major League Baseball. Not everyone can easily earn that ticket. But instead of looking at the guys who made it to the MLB, why don't we take a look at the players who either didn't make it or spent a lot of time in the minors. Lucas. Trevor Hildenberger is a right-handed bullpen pitcher from San Jose. He has played in the majors for four years, but has spent eight seasons in the minor leagues. Michael Stahl, a freelance writer who covers many topics, decided to interview Trevor Hildenberger on his journey during the minor leagues. He asked him how he was doing financially, which Hildenberger responded with a surprising answer. Stahl mentioned how, quote, Hildenberger cashed a $185 check every two weeks during that six month season. Once travel, workouts, and other activities requiring their time were factored in, Hildenberger and his teammates deduced they earned an hourly rate of roughly $2. Imagine working your tail off trying to take care of yourself and family and only getting paid $2 an hour. Trevor Hildenberger was not the only minor league baseball player who spoke out about this problem. In 2022, it was reported that MILB players would not be getting paid in spring training and that MLB players argued for that to remain the case. Minor league baseball players were furious about this and decided to speak out. Casey Sadler, a MLB pitcher, stated how tough the life of a baseball player is and how it is like a sacrifice. He said, quote, baseball is a pure sacrifice until you make it. We often had three jobs each 
and still needed assistance. Another player named Donnie Sellers also stated how minor league baseball players are used and do not get the same treatment as MLB players. Quote, it's obvious minor leaguers are taken advantage of, and I'm tired of being quiet about it. With plenty of players and people implying or telling the league that they must make a change in their system, the commissioner has been told to do so, but is yet to listen. Instead, he has done quite the opposite. Rob Manfred stated back in 2019 how he planned on removing 42 minor league teams from the league. He said he wanted to do this because of inadequate facilities, travel, poor pay, and drafting and signing players who do not have a realistic shot at making it to the majors. This is so sad and irritating for minor league baseball players as it shows how players remain ignored by the league's officials as they are forced to play baseball and live with these difficulties. As frustrating as it is, you can't really blame the teams, cause they too have their own problems. If we look at every minor league baseball team's Facebook account, the Toledo Mud Hens are the most followed minor league baseball team with over 100,000 followers. Already hearing that should show you something. Your most followed MILB team has just 100,000 followers? Like that's it? But anyways, to get back to what I was saying, it's not like minor league baseball teams post once every two months or aren't active on the media. They try their best to get as much attention as possible and connect with their fans. The Portland Sea Dogs official YouTube channel posts various videos such as highlights, Hall of Fame inductions, and community events of their team. They do this to try and help interact with their fan base while trying to grow their audience. However, it had yet to go as planned, as the team is still unknown to many people. And MLB's lack of attention on social media contributes to low game attendance. As we all know, minor league baseball games are practically empty with barely any fans showing up. In 2022, minor league baseball teams had an average attendance of 3,910 people per game. However, if we compare this to the average attendance of a game from 2005 to 2019, teams typically had an attendance of 4,150 fans. So how is it that MILB team's attendance continues decreasing? Well, it has to do with the fact that MILB teams struggle with team equity. An academy teacher named Kristen David Hanna explained how it works, saying, quote, Fan identification has been found to predict brand equity, which the advantage college sport enjoys in terms of fan identification and is likely carried over to an advantage in terms of brand equity. Minor League Baseball's lack of media coverage makes it more dependent on ticket revenue. What this proves is that how MILB teams need help finding enough fans to grow their name. To connect this with the point I made with the players, Minor League Baseball teams do not acquire enough money to then give to the players. If the players received a good salary, then the team could very well go out of business. Minor League Baseball teams are struggling to stay in business and have to simultaneously try and please their players, who they too are trying their best to make the money and take care of themselves. It's a mess, but there can be a potential solution. If you're asking me, I believe there are two solutions that can work. One that I'm more sure of than the other. The first solution for MILB could be to have justice for the players and attempt to spread the message to the public. The best way to do so would be by using social media, as most people would hear about the players' problems on the media. As great as this would be, it doesn't guarantee the league's officials listening. I mean, sure, they'll hear about it, but it will only spread more controversy which the league will try and ignore. Another solution that would be simpler if you ask me is to have a union for MILB players. Having a union can help give the players what they want, as their complaints will be directly told to the league's officials. MILB players can receive the help they deserve by having their own union, where an individual speaks out and states all the ongoing problems. If MLB players want their demands to happen, they must be patient and hope for a change to occur sooner rather than later.